Let's read Katawa Shoujo. Now, so you have chosen to go down the path of either Shizune or Emi. So let's continue with the game, shall we? I feel ve very tired this morning, probably because yesterday itself was a very tiring day. On top of that, I woke up far earlier than necessary. After saying hi to Shizune and Misha, I start doing the work as instructed from the board. It already looks like it today is going to be heavy. I don't have a problem with that now though. Shizune and Misha might jump on me trying to get an answer about whether or not I've decided to join the student council, even if it's just one day. I wouldn't put it past them to try, and I don't e have an answer for them if they do, so this situation is convenient for me. About 10 minutes into class, Hanak walks in and takes a seat, but no one looks at her. The teacher doesn't even comment on her lateness. He does, however, stop us to say that we are going to break into groups again. I turn my head and see that Shizune and Misha are looking at me. Shizune gives me a smile that is equal parts cute and menacing. This is a smile that says, we have you now, there is no escape. Hee-chan, it looks like we are together again, yay yay. Misha leans sideways while Shizune pushes her desk closer to mine. There really is no ni escape now, unless I have where to jump through the window. Jumping out the window isn't the best option, sadly. Da -da -da. What's wrong, Hitchen? Da -da -da. Oh, Hitchen, have you been thinking about what you said yesterday? You said that you would think about joining the student council, didn't you? It's okay, Hitchen. We were talking talking about it after you left, and it would be rude to accept you to already have an answer for us this early, right? Right? Laughter. I'm so happy you two are able to have a laugh at my expense, and even more pleased to know that you both know how crazy the two of you can be. Now that that's over, Shizune snaps back into serious mode and smacks today's assignment with the back of her hand in an overly dramatic and in an important way. When I actually look at the, uh, look at the stuff, it's mo mostly just reading. In fact, there are only two problems. I almost want to say something about how her rush to get started seems a bit much, considering how the small amount of work. In fact, Shizune probably knows how little there is and simply doesn't care. Yeah, it seems like the workload doesn't matter to her as much as the fact that there is work. The actual amount is unimportant. She approaches everything with the same level of ambition. While I'm reading, I let my eyes wander around the room and catch Hanako trying her hand at solving the problems. It looks, it looks like she's working alone. I can't remember seeing her working with other people before. Thinking back to how... how been thinking back to how, how, how shy she is, it's understandable. Hey, that girl over there. Huh? Who, Hitchin? Her, Hanako, over there. Does she always work alone? I think so, Hitchin. Do you feel sorry for her because she's alone? I was just thinking that maybe she could work with us or something? Hmm. I. No, I do not think. I don't think that would be a good idea, Hitchin. Why not? She chan wouldn't get along with her. Why? <coughs> Misha su shuffles around the question, letting out a laugh that sounds very strange. It's nervous, but still has that lift, lilting up and down quality present in everything she says. Just because. Just because, Hitchin. By now, Shizune has noticed our conversation, and it makes me realize again how Misha has been signing everything she has been saying this whole time. Dot dot dot. What, Shichan? A friend of my enemy is my enemy. That sounds so harsh, I'm not going to say that. You said it anyway. 
I know Hitchin. It's fine if you over here. I wonder if this is Misha's way of keeping things fair, since without her, I wouldn't be able to understand a thing Shizune is saying and vice versa. Is that also why she signs all the time, so there is never a conversation Shizune would be will be left out of? Dot dot dot. Anyway, we should start on the problems now, Hitchen. We finish with time to spare, and I decide to ask if there are any alternatives to the cafeteria. As frankly, the food so far has been sub sub par. This sends Shizune and Misha arguing among themselves about their favorite restaurants. All of them are downtown, so I don't think so I don't think we have time to go all the way there. And how about the bill? What about the bill? Are they arguing just for the fun of it? Maybe. They seem so distracted by it that they don't even notice the start of the actual lunch break. I look over my shoulder towards the back of the classroom. She seems to be studying her notes from the previous class. It's an odd sight. Everyone else in the class is busy busying themselves with the lunch break. Socializing, gossiping, rearranging desks. The ones with actual boxed lunches mixed in and chattering like everyone else. Only interrupted by short bouts of eating. But when I watch Hanako, it feels that I'm the only one who can see her. Almost as if she was invisible. Sort of hiding in plain sight. Is she being bullied? Is she isolating herself from the rest of the class on her own accord? I see her look over her shoulder towards the classroom's rear door. Come to think of it, she hasn't turned a page since I started watching her. I guess she's waiting for someone. What to do? So... Mm, we are going down this path, so let's take this option. Wait for Shizune, Shizune and Misha. Misha and Shizune are still arguing about their choice for lunch place, incomprehensible for a pair of high school students who have to take a taxi at least to make it to da downtown and back in time. Haven't you finished already? Oh, sorry Hitchin, were you waiting for us? Da -da -da. You don't have any plans? Plans? For lunch? Well, I don't. So I thought you, I could hang with you guys. Misha smiles victoriously at my lack of plans and excitedly translates my response to Shizune. If you don't have anything specific planned out, do you want to eat lunch with me and Shichan? Ah, uh, we're going to go to town for lunch though. Don't worry, Hitchen, it's not that far. Sure, I'll come with you. And with that, we leave the classroom. Just around the corner of the hallway, something hits me in the chest with the force of a runaway train. Ouch. Opening my eyes, I see a pair of saucer-like green eyes looking up at me. They belong to, a to the perpetrator, a short girl who bumped into me and, now ha and has now fallen down onto the hallway floor. She wears a PE -P -E uniform and a worried frown. The former strikes me as a rather strange thing to have on during lunch break. More striking than that though is that she doesn't have legs. Or she does but they're not flesh and bone. Her pale and very much flesh and bone th thighs end in shins and at and feet made of something black metallic or plastic like material. They look disturbingly artificial and unnatural. It almost makes me forget that my chest is hurting. The girl winces at a l winces a little, rubs her nose and jumps up. Oh man. Hey, are you alright? I'm sorry about that, really. I wasn't looking where I was going. And you just came out of nowhere. Sorry, sorry. She's looking really apologetic, in the hurt puppy way of looking apologetic. I quickly forget about being angry or anything, since hurt puppies are my weak spot. It's okay, uh, don't worry about it. Ouch. 
I say that, but there's a, there's a stinging pain growing in my chest. And I know that this is about the biggest possible danger for my condition. Don't overextert yourself. Don't forget a, don't forget your medication and most of all, don't get hit in the chest. I tried to rub my solar plexus to chase the pain away, holding my pre breath in attempt to ha hear my heartbeat. It seems normal. Hey, should I get the nurse? Get a nurse? Uh, the very, very high-pitched voice of the girl snaps me out of it. I stare at her for a few seconds, dumbfounded, until I realize that I probably looked worse off than I really was. Doubled over myself and looking all the tense. Damn, I'm overly worried about my heart. Uh, no need, I'm fine. Managing to say something in response, I pull myself up, pull myself upright, feeling more sore ribs one, one last. Feeling my sore ribs one last time and take a deep breath. She just knocked the wind out of me big time. But it's nothing more than that. You sure you're okay? I hit you pretty hard. It's okay. I said I was fine and nothing's broken. No harm done. That was... That's good. I was... I feel a hand on my shoulder at the same time that the girl's... Eep! I don't have time to look behind me because Shizune is already shoving me aside and stomping over to the girl, signing furiously at her. Miss Ibarasaki, Ibarasaki, Ibarasaki. I saw that. Running in the halls is strictly forbidden. Misha translates right on Shizune's tail, but her voice is girlishly playful and not fully the divine fury Shizune's arm movements would seem to call for. Uh, sorry, I was just going to get some stuff and I was in a kind of hurry. Dot, dot, dot. You've been told this a thousand times before. Your reckless behavior endangers other students in even worse. It's explicitly against the school regulations. The girl blushes and starts to fidget nervously like a little child caught misbehaving. It's so cute I find myself smiling. I know that. I, um, I was just... Dot, dot, dot. Make sure that this will not happen again, although I'm sure telling you this is futile and only causes me further headache, f further headache when you choose to ignore the regulations. Got that, Emmy? The small girl sticks her thought out in response. Ah, I gotta go. Teacher will have, teacher will have my head. I promised to help with printouts, but I went running instead. Sorry, but I've got to... I've, I've got a change and everything. Before Mish and Shizune I, or I can say anything, she's already bolted from where she was a second ago, almost whole, halfway towards the stairwell. Shizune looks like she's about to go nuclear on the spot, so I smile at her in vain, in a vain attempt to calm her down. Da -da -da. Are you okay, Hitchin? That Ibarasaki, Ibarasaki girl is always like that, causing trouble to others. You know, I'm pretty certain Shizune wouldn't call me Hitchin. Never mind, never mind. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, anyway, I'm okay. Just got the wind knocked out of me. Da -da -da. That's great, Hitchin. I wouldn't call that great, but I let it slide this one time. Da -da 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 -da. So, let's hurry, Hitchin, to have lunch. We promise it'll be great. I'll take your word for it. What kind of place is it? A restaurant or something? Dot, dot, dot. It's a tea house, Hitchin. A tea house? That sounds kind of fancy. Dot, dot, dot. Why are you looking at your wallet, Hitchin? It's okay if you don't have any money. We'll cover for you. That's really nice of you. Thanks. It's okay, Hitchin. After all, we are friends. Right, Hitchin? It's only been three days. Three days. Are we really friends that quickly? Huh, but hearing that makes me happy. Dot, dot, dot. Ah, it's only for today, though. And if only if you accept right now. Do you want to go, Hitchin? I start wondering if this is some sort of... Some kind of trap. Is this Misha's suggestion or Shizune's? This is important. 
I'm still a little apprehensive about the possible motives of a girl whose favorite pastime is a game of world domination. No, I'm just being paranoid. Actually, they have grown on me already, and do I have I do have to go to town sometime, so why not now with them? I've never actually been to a tea house before. All my expectations are from what I've seen about them on TV. But those are pe period dramas dramas and these are modern times. It might just be a regular cafe and they're just calling it a tea house. Either way, I'm curious about that too, so there's another reason for me to join them. Sure. That's great, Hitchin. That's great, that's great. Yay! Misha hops down, up and down briefly to show her how happy she is, which causes a few heads to turn towards, towards us. She soon a opts for a polite tiny clap that lasts for all, the, all of two seconds before she goes back to looking stoic as usual. Would it kill you to be a little happier, Shizune? Oh, I wasn't aware that Hitchen was a king. <coughs> Shizune pushes her glasses up as Misha delivers her message totally without sarcasm. I guess it would be would sting more if she could say it with the intent Shizune meant behind it. So for once I'm happy to have Misha as a barrier between us. I'm not telling you to jump for joy just because I'm having lunch with you. I'm not that arrogant. She seems to accept this and we head for, head for town with Shizune leading the way. Watching her walk in front of me, I noticed that she walks very quickly, taking long, heavy, determined strides. Maybe if we were traveling through the no through a no snowstorm it would make sense to walk like that, but it's, perfect, it's a perfectly clear day. Anyway, it's making me feel exhausted just watching her. We arrive at the, at the tea house in what Misha says is record time, likely because of Shizune's place pace. I feel a little let down seeing that it's not a huge feudal era building with mats on the floor and women in kimonos pouring tea. It's actually more like a cafe as I thought. Not that it's a bad thing, it looks very nice. As soon as I walk through the door, someone zooms in front of us, as if they had been lying in wait the entire time. Welcome, thank you for patron patronizing this establishment. The top half of her body drops forward in a bowl that looks like an axe chopping through wood. I'm surprised to see it's not... I'm surprised to see it's none other than you, called the librarian. Hey, I didn't know you worked here. Oh, yes I do. I'm a waitress. I've been working here for one year, six months and two weeks now. Thank you for choosing to come here. Is there anything I can do for you? Hi, you chan Hello. Misha, you both know her too? Of course, Hichan. yu chan works in the library after all. Don't, I don't go there often myself, but Shichan knows her and we both come here a lot, so it's like we see her all the time. Um, yes, should I get your usuals and if there's anything you would want, please feel free to tell me anytime. Tell me at any time. You don't have to be so formal, we all know each other. It's also pretty empty today, so she can afford to take it easy. I was hoping she would stop looking so nervous, but my words had the opposite effect. No, I'm a waitress. This is my job. I have to do. I have to do it properly. Da da da. Okay, okay. That works for Shichan. You, Chan, please get Shichan what she usually gets, and I'll have some green tea with milk and honey. No pressure. Um, yes, but this is my job, and there's always pressure. I'm sorry. I'm arguing with a customer. I'm sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Yuko takes another 100, mi 100 mile per hour bow. I decide to give up and join Shizune and Misha at the table. As soon as I sit down, Yuko comes by looking even more upset than before. I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. I forgot, forgot to take your order. I'm not attentive to customers. Right. That's not right. Uh, I'm sorry. If there's anything I can do to make up for it, please tell me. 
And with that picture, I think we can end the episode right here. I'll thank you for watching. Please come next time. Leave your comments below. Like, favorite, subscribe, and all the fun stuff. Have a good day. Ganmu out. <laughs>